Thunder Coaster was the third and final Vacoma Wood Coaster ever built. This is a terrain coaster at Tucsonfried with several sizable drops down the hill. I heard mixed things about this coaster over the years, mainly that it had good airtime, but it was rough. Well, I recently got to experience the coaster. While this may have the best layout of a Vacoma Wood Coaster, it does have some flaws, and I'll discuss those in this review. At the turn of the millennium, Vacoma started offering wood coasters. They only built three, all of which went to European theme parks. The first was Robin Hood at Wallaby Holland, which has since been converted into an RMC hybrid coaster known as Untamed. The second was Lugaroo, which still runs at Wallaby Belgium. While that coaster is undeniably bouncy, I actually really enjoyed that ride and thought it had some surprising airtime moments. The third and final Vacoma wood coaster was Thunder Coaster. This opened at Tusenfried in 2001. It was Norway's first wooden roller coaster, and it's still the country's only one to this day. If you're unfamiliar with Tusenfried, you should know it's one of the hilliest parks out there. This amusement park has very little flat ground, so Vacoma had to get creative and build this coaster on a hill. This gives the coaster a unique layout with some great drops. While you can see the ride's signature second drop as you enter the park, the coaster's entrance is actually quite a ways back from the entry plaza, and it is prudent to head here early. Thunder Coaster is one of the slowest moving lines in the entire park. For my visit, and any report I heard from 2023, the ride was running just one train. That is really unfortunate for a ride as long as this. The park owns two trains, and I know they've run two in the past, so hopefully the park can return to that in future seasons, because this ride needs it. I visited on a summer Sunday, and the ride's queue line was around an hour midday. That was with about roughly one third of the ride's very long queue line filled. Towards the end of the day, the queue line reduced dramatically, and I was able to get a few quick re-rides in the final half hour. But no, you could find the line closed if crowds do not subside. Tucson Free is one of those parks where they close the queue lines early, so the last train goes out exactly at park close. So that's why it's safest to hit this ride early in the day. When you reach the station, the park lets just enough people through the turnstiles to fill the next train. Seating is then on a first-come basis. Unfortunately, at least in the day I visited, they will not let you wait an extra cycle if the seat you want is already occupied. I was fortunately able to try this coaster in both the front and back, and I thought it was better towards the back. That maximizes the ride's largest drops. Fortunately, most people choose to fill the train front to back, so getting the back isn't too difficult. Originally, this coaster had two trains from Vacoma. These were four-car, three-bench trains identical to those found in Lugaroo. I actually liked these trains on Lugaroo because they had nice cushioning, and the lap bar granted quite a bit of room to experience negative Gs, as long as you held onto it once checked to prevent it from lowering mid-ride. Now Thunder Coaster is Timberliner trains from Gravity Group. These were added in 2015, they hold the same number of riders, 24, but the trains now have 12 cars. I find Timberliners comfortable, but I know larger guests may find the seats a bit narrow for their tastes. The one thing to watch out with this one specifically is the lap bar. It's a bulky bar that swivels from the side. It's not uncomfortable, but the employees were really pushing it down, more so than any other gravity groups I have ridden. This made it a bit harder to appreciate the airtime in some of my rides. One interesting thing with Thunder Coasters is that the lap bars lock in place once the train is dispatched. This means they will at least not lower any further once checked. That's probably a good thing because there are some really rough valleys in this coaster. That is my biggest con with this ride, the tracking. I believe this coaster got a lot of track work just before the pandemic, but there were some really brutal spots as of 2023. The first half in particular is quite bumpy, with the first two turns in particular really beating you up. It didn't matter where you sat either. These moments were just flat out nasty. Once dispatched, you head straight into the lift hill, and it is a loud lift hill that can be heard from several areas of the park. Now I can't find an exact height for this ride, but I'd estimate the lift hill to be about 8-9 to nine stories in height. Thunder Coaster then kicks things off with a swooping drop to the left. It reminds me of a first drop on a GCI, and if you ride in the back, you get some great laterals as you're pulled downwards. Just brace yourself for that pullout. It is fast, 
but it's really shaky. Then comes the highlight of the ride, the second hill. This is a giant camelback with a 105 foot or 32 meter drop on the other side. This is actually the largest drop on the ride because it takes you all the way down the hill. You get some okay floater airtime over the top and the front, but this is where the back row shines. You get nice sustained floater airtime the whole way down. At the bottom, you hit the ride's a max speed of 58 miles per hour or 93 kilometers per hour, and then you have a low turn through a tunnel. This really accentuates the ride's speed. The turn continues twisting upwards as you climb back up the hill. This offers some laterals, but unfortunately, the train will be shuffling violently the whole way up. This part flat out hurt. The turn then morphs into a bunny hill at the top. This offers some weak floater airtime towards the front, but no negative G's in the back. The opposite happens on the next hill. You have another bunny hill over the lift hill. This one gives an okay pop of airtime if you're in the back. This is followed by another bank turn. This one has solid speed to it, but it is another rough spot. You then have a surprise drop back down the hill. This drop really caught me off guard. You can't really see it off rod unless you know where to look. It offered good sustained floater airtime in the back rows, and since it's buried in the support structure, you also have some sweet near misses on the way down. You then have a banked hill upwards into the right. The front gets an okay pop of airtime over the top, and then this leads into a straight drop giving a burst of airtime for those in the back as well. Then comes a turnaround. No airtime into it, but the turn has solid laterals, and the resultant drop has some weak floater airtime in the back. You then have a little bunny hill giving a pinch of airtime for all. Then comes the final turnaround. It is profiled weirdly. It looks super janky with this elongated bank turn into it, but it's thankfully tolerable. The drop off of it gives an okay pop of airtime in the back. This is followed by another speed bump giving a little spot of airtime for all. Then you jump upwards into the brakes, and if you're riding up front, you get a really nice pop of airtime here. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. You then come to a stop and return to the station, ending the 3,120 foot or 950 meter long layout. In terms of pacing, Thunder Coaster is really good. It's a pretty intense wood coaster with how it carries its speed, and there's a nice mix of hills and turns. So what would I rate Thunder Coaster? I would give this ride a 6 out of 10. It's a decent wood coaster overall. I love the use of terrain and the quirky layout. The large drops keep you on your toes, and they have some good airtime in the back row. Then this ride has plenty of airtime moments, mostly in the weaker side. Going in, I was under the impression this ride may have some stronger airtime like Luguru, but it was at least plentiful. My biggest issue here was the roughness. Those first three turns in particular really need some attention. This would dramatically improve the experience if they got retracked. I think if this ride were smoother, it would probably be the best Facoma wood coaster. It definitely is the best layout. But as it stands, I do prefer Lou Guru because it's more tolerable for me. So those are my thoughts on Thunder Coaster at Tucson Freed. What are your thoughts on this coaster? How do you think it compares to the other Facoma woodies? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.